updates or you want to like go hiking or exploring some places and you want her to be there all right so i think that's one of um that's a really good point about you know it can get bored just talk to to through a phone and just maintain that relationship like mm -hmm. that where you for example me i like to travel and i like to go exploring new places and i want my girl to be next to me but if that's not the case then you know it's hard to to connect emotionally i think in my in my end you know what i mean yeah for sure but, um so yeah one one thing i would say just to like you know add a cave caveat to that again you can't put yourself in a this is a conversation between friends none of what is said here should be taken as legal advice we are not experts in any way take what resonates and leave the rest Welcome back, everybody. It has been another hot minute. Seemingly, we have dropped the uh, scheduling to maybe once a week at this point. But, you know, we have lives to live and stuff happens. Plus, it's difficult to keep coming up with topics every single other day or something like that. So whenever we get the inspiration, we'll come back or we'll come back. So for today's topic, we have long distance relationships. Um, so, you know. My boy Michael is in Ecuador right now. So, how's uh, how do you go about maintaining a long distance relationship if you are in one, and just kind of expanding upon that topic and seeing where that goes? So, where do you want to start with this? Well, sure. Um, well, I think I, I'm the only one who had experience with long distance relationship at this point. I don't think you had, but you can definitely help me, like giving me your input of somebody who never been on. A long distance and why you've never taken one so i actually have a long story that <laughs> uh, my 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 experience with long distance began with my first girl which was right after high school so she was my high school sweetheart and then i went to buffalo and it was cool and whatever like we maintained it we were really close we used to face them every so every pro probably every day if not every day like we would talk and keep communication and we maintain it. And I always come back, you know, like during the breaks and stuff. But ultimately, I feel like the biggest issue with long distance relationship is going to be trust. So that slowly, slowly starts deteriorating, especially if uh, one of the partners is insecure about something or the mm -hmm. other partner gives reasons for this person to be insecure and not trust this person so right. i think the biggest challenge when it comes to long distance relationship is going to be first of all it's going to be trust and secondly there's not the security that touch that you can provide to each other you know and maintain it mm -hmm. i think that's one of the biggest issues that i see and i faced uh when i was going through a long distance relationship so um, would it work? I don't know. <laughs> but well, from, it's challenging. Prior, from prior history, that last relationship or that long distance didn't work out. It didn't work so, out. So, so, yeah. Well, why do you think that was, though, for you? I think I was young. I was very young, and I was just getting into the party scene of college. I was going out with my friends. And something that I kind of realize now is that... Um, like, I was talking to her, like, let's say, Monday through Thursday. And then after Friday, I disappeared completely. Because I was with friends. I was, like, having a life. And pretty much, you know, it's it's hard to maintain that connection eventually when it comes to the long term. And it becomes a little bit annoying after a while when somebody doesn't trust you. So yeah. how can you do that? Right? That's true. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, like, again you're the one that has the more experience with it and everything that you mentioned is basically like the issues with long-term or long distance relationship. Um, man, I don't know, like long distance relationships have a tendency of failing often. Right. And trying to beat the odds is usually something that that's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, again, it comes down to not being insecure, you know, being well, one of the big things is to be focused on 
again, like we always come back to some sort of mission, some sort of purpose. Right. Because at the end of the day, when you're in a long distance relationship and the whole point is to be committed, it's very easy to just have a wandering eye or, you know, somebody catches your attention or whatever the case might be. And the other person isn't around, to, you know, to satisfy whatever sexual urges that you may have. And that's usually why these relationships end up failing, because not necessarily that it's wrong to have sexual urges, but, you know, it's like the same for somebody that's starving, right? Like if you put food in front of them, there's a high probability that if they're starving, they're going to eat the food. Our sex drive is just, a, it's, it's in a similar fashion or it's in a similar wavelength. Um, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, you can try to stave that off by, you know, doing FaceTime or, you know, doing some sexual stuff on the phone or whatever the case might be or through video. But at the end of the day, the real live thing is the thing that we seek, right? Because that's where we derive the most amount of pleasure from. Um, so, yeah, man, it's hard to make a long distance relationship work. I really don't know if I could make it work um, just because, you know, for maybe a time being, but like for an extended amount of time, like going on for like six months, one year, two years, that's going to be very, very difficult because I'm very young, very sexually active and telling me that I, I can't have that because, you know, well, I mean, it depends on the circumstances as well, right? Like sometimes life happens and you can't really be together and, you know, that happens, but there has to be at least an effort to try to, you know, come back together within a certain amount of time and not just have this be like a normal thing where you guys are just apart because distance will you know, make the relationship deteriorate over time, whether it be due to, you know, the loyalty or the trust, uh, just like, the, just basically the boredom that ends yeah. up occurring, right? I think that's one, that's another thing to, um, you know, you want to do stuff with your partner or you want to go out, you want to have dates or you want to like go hiking or exploring some places and you want her to be there, right? So I think that's one of, um, that's a really good point about, you know, it can get work, just talk to, to through a phone and just maintain that relationship like that where you for example me i like to travel and i like to go exploring new places and i want my girl to be next to me but if that's not the case then you know it's hard to to connect emotionally i think in my in my end you know what i mean yeah for sure. but, um so yeah one one thing i would say just to like you know add a caveat to that again you can't put yourself in a situation where, you know, well, I mean, life is going to put you in situations where people are going to be around you that you're attracted to and whatever. Right. But you shouldn't go out of your way to put yourself in these situations because again, it's, let's say you're on a diet, right? Mm -hmm. I always relate everything to exercise and nutrition. Um, let's say you're on a diet and you know that you're not supposed to eat this thing, but if somebody puts it in front of you, like puts this cake or this ice cream in front of you, and it's the only thing around you, right? Because you haven't done any meal prepping or you haven't bought the right kinds of foods to eat healthy. And then the most likely scenario is that you're going to eat the unhealthy thing. So don't put these temptations in front of you because otherwise it's just going to make it significantly harder. But go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, some situations that can force you to get into a long distance relationship. So I think the, the top of my list, it will be work. So, for example, if your partner finds a better job uh, somewhere else, some some other state, what would you do in that case? Hmm. So let's say this is her. This is her. This is her goal. This is her purpose. Like everything that she has been working on, and her dream job is in another state or another country. But you already have your life there. What would you? Right. Do? So in a situation like that, it would really just depend on how my situation is, right? Because ideally for me, I would like to be location independent. So I don't have to be stuck to any one location. And that's what I'm working towards now, right? Um, so ideally, it would, wouldn't be too much of an issue because we can just pick up and leave. But let's say I'm still in the process of building and I still need to stay in my location for at least another couple of years 
before I can build out to where I want to be, then, you know, sometimes the situation becomes, you know, like the right person, but the wrong time or right person in the wrong place, whatever the case, whatever the scenario is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a relationship is just, isn't just meant to be at that time. And that's something that you're going to have to be okay with. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be responsible for yourself and the other person has to be responsible for themselves. You have to take the most priority in yourself and they have to do the same. And if you're going to pick up and leave, even though you're not ready for that, that's going to put you in a really detrimental position. Because if for some reason later on down the road, the relationship starts deteriorating and it could easily start deteriorating because you start building this resentment because you were forced to leave because you wanted to stay with them, right? But if something, for whatever other reason, there's something else, now you're stuck in a, in a place where, you know, you shouldn't be there. You don't have anybody. And now you're just going to have to start from scratch. So right. that's what I would say. Yeah, I agree with you about, you know, um, aiming for some, like me personally, I aim to be something remote. But eventually uh, my home and my family is in New York City. Well, not New York City, New York. So um, I, I think finding a compromise between, you know, between her and me about what can work with each other. So maybe, you know, sometime where she's at, and maybe finding a way for her work to be remote as well. So she can come to New York and so forth. But it, I, think, I think that can be like just temporal until you find a, a permanent, permanent solution. But it, I agree with you, like you, you shouldn't be forced to, to move to a place just because you partner, you know, unless you, you have that flexibility and you willing to do that. But yep. yeah, it's, 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 it's a hard question, you know, like eventually uh, you don't know what life is gonna bring you and maybe you are going to be put in these situations. And it's crazy to think about it because you're so used to your partner being next to you and you know having the um you know having her available to you all the time and you doing fun things with her going out and well just spending quality time with her that's what it, where i was going mm -hmm. whereas if she's away it's going to be tough but you know i feel like not everybody can survive a long distance relationship and yeah yeah man for sure uh, like here's one thing right Mm -hmm. So one of the metrics of having a good relationship is to be in a situation where your life is, you know, like we said before, hundred mm -hmm. percent, they are just the cherry on top to your life. Right. But right. this goes across the board, right? So like this goes for every single person you meet, not necessarily just the person you're in a relationship with. So at the end of the day, your life should be set up such that you don't need to be with another person, right? It's just, it's a compliment to have them in your life. So a lot of the things that we've mentioned before, like, you know, making sure that you're on your purpose, making sure that, you know, you have hobbies and activities that you do on the side, making sure that, you know, you're building towards the future, making sure that your life is organized in such a way where it's not dependent on any one person, on any one individual or any individuals, right? Because a lot of people have a tendency of deriving a sense of value and a sense of worth from another person. And that's where everything goes, goes to shit. Because eventually something's going to happen where you need to be confident in who you are. And because this, you've derived value from another person, you're not going to have that. And, you know, that leads to issues in terms of inadequacy, uh, you know, resentment, you know, you start becoming jealous of whatever, you know, if you're in a long distance relationship, you don't really know what's happening in the day-to-day -day life of the other person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can start easily becoming secure, jealous, resentful, angry, bitter. So these are things that are usually a symptom of a bigger problem, which is you don't have your shit together. Your right. life isn't, you haven't prioritized having your shit together. You're prioritizing somebody else's life and how they're doing and how whatever they're feeling is going to affect you. At the end of the day, again, they're a complement to your life and they shouldn't be a focus. They should be a focus, but not the focus. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing that, that you should be taking away from this. So if they become a focus, like the center of your attention, 
like every other thought that you have is about them, then that's that's where you want to sit down, reevaluate, see what's going on, see why it is that you don't have anything else going on in your life. And there you go. That's, that's for sure. And, you know, if for whatever reason you get put into that situation, you shouldn't, you don't, you don't have to have the need of no, like every move that she makes because, you know, you're confident that she might not be doing anything. And even though if she does something, then she can- You should have the confidence to be able to walk away, right? Exactly. I agree with you on that point. But yeah, where else we can take this topic at? <laughs> uh, let's see. So I would also say, again, like that's going to solve the issues of, you know, the long distance relationship in general, mm -hmm. right? Because again, long distance relationships aren't like, so long as the time frame isn't drastic, again, like six months, a year, multiple years, mm -hmm. right? Like this thing, this, these things tend to happen when uh, the person goes into the military, right? That's, that's usually a big issue. And a lot of times relationships that are within the, the military bound don't last or, you know, like the husband goes to war and the wife is back home, she's bored. And then eventually she starts cheating or whatever the case might be. That happens often. Like there's so many stories of that happening. But again, if you have your ship together and you have your life settled and organized, you can have a long distance relationship because you're not insecure in any particular way, right? right? If the other person is good, you know, you trust them, then you won't have to worry about that. And if it's the opposite, you know, there's something to worry about. Well, all right. Well, there's no issues with just, you know, moving on and replacing that's that's where you want to be in life. You need to be in this mindset mindset of abundance. You don't, you shouldn't have to be stuck with where you are simply because you don't see a way forward. Right. I absolutely agree with you on that aspect. That you know you shouldn't get attached with someone who you don't spend, especially if you don't spend quality time with her, because ultimately you know, there are other options out there. In what what's that saying? Like whatever. No, everything happens for a reason. So therefore, if you know if that relationship doesn't work and you don't feel that you can do long distance relationship, then it's time to move on because a better person will come, a better partner you will find. And better circumstance. It depends on the circumstances. Yeah. Better circumstances, yeah, yeah. for sure. Because yeah. again, uh, that expression of you know right person, right place, right time, right. I feel like, like that doesn't really exist. Do you think? No. I mean, I would say so because, again, going back to long distance, it becomes like the right person, mm -hmm. but the wrong time or the wrong place, right? True. Because sometimes that's just, it is what it is. And I feel like these things need to line up for you to be in a good relationship because otherwise it's not going to work out too well. Right. But why don't, why don't you think it works or that? that expression means because it's it's too idealistic i would say it's the right person right time what else right place right place i feel like that's too perfect for something to happen mm. like you can meet uh your you know the right person anywhere and the timing doesn't have to be necessarily good like if you if you find value in that person, no value, but like, you know, if you find her attractive and you want to take your shot, then you should, that shouldn't really matter. Because I, I think like that mentality about the right place, the right person at the right time is always going to have you uh, staying or waiting to take that shot. Whereas the mm -hmm. timing, I feel like it's, it's, it shouldn't be, I mean, in certain, certain situations, yeah, timing is crucial. Like you cannot approach to a girl on a gym when she's working out gotta wait until she's like you know maybe done with her set and then approach it but no nah, i think that's too idealistic in my opinion i think too idealistic. too idealistic yeah okay i think yeah i mean um i think we're thinking about it in different perspectives because i think you're thinking about it from like an initial approach mm -hmm. but i'm thinking more general right so right place right person or right person right place right time like if the situation presents itself to go approach a girl Mm -hmm. That would be, that would, you know, satisfy those conditions, right? Place, right person, right time, right? 
So that's what I mean. It's not necessarily like, you know, everything needs to line up perfectly, right? Uh, where, you know, like, let's say you're at the gym and she's on a break from her set and, you know, she's not on her phone, so she's not distracted. So you can approach and you can talk and whatever, try to make something happen from there. I just mean in a more general circumstance. Like, again, the way I met my girl was here at the gym. And it was a situation of right place, right time, and right person. Because I was on a break. She walked through the front door. She asked to see a trainer. Or she was recommended to go see a trainer. And I was just sitting there doing nothing. Right? <laughs> so I was just like, perfect timing. And it was the right place because I was at the gym at that day. And then that day particularly. And the right person because, you know, we hit it off once we started talking and our personalities seemed to mesh well. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. Okay, yeah, I, I think... I give you the, on that, on like on the general more, general aspect. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, like when a situation presents itself where like, you know, right, right, hey, right. this girl is attractive and you want to go approach. Yeah, the, the timing isn't going to be perfect, right? Like she's in a rush or you're in a rush. So, but yeah, I get what you mean. True, true. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I think on the general aspect, that can work. Just because, um, you know, you don't know when that situation is going to come. So it's going to be the right timing for that situation over for that circumstance in the right place because yeah uh, you have to be there <laughs> else you're not, never gonna meet her uh, the right person because you gotta if you're not there then that's not gonna happen exactly <laughs> and the right person because the chemistry it's always going to be something that puts you guys together or like you know attract each other because if there's no chemistry then it's never gonna work out even as hot as she is if there's not chemistry, forget about it. Yep. But yeah, All right. I think that concludes the topic for today. And All right, so let's sum it up. What do you so last thoughts here? What do you what do you suggest if you're in a long term relationship? Or long distance, long distance, yeah, sorry. I think uh, long distance relationship is not for everybody. And you shouldn't put yourself in a position to be on it if you're not that type of person to be on it. Because shit is gonna happen. And maybe you have the confidence to trust the person, but if that person doesn't trust you, then the relationship is never gonna work out. Mm -hmm. And it should be like two way stream rather than one way. But yeah. Cool. Yeah, I would say the same. Um, yeah, and everything that I, just, I mentioned making sure that everything is prioritized in your life such that the other person isn't a focus, isn't the center of your life. Mm -hmm. They are, again, a compliment. If they're not a compliment, then you need to restructure, sit down, reorganize, and see where it is that you're messing up or not paying an, enough attention to in aspects like, hey, is my physical health good, right? Are you putting enough attention in that? Hey, am I doing good with my work? or whatever it is that I, I'm trying to pursue in terms of a career. Um, do I have good relations with people outside of this relationship, right? Are your relationships with your family good? Do you have good friend groups, right? Not just like a single friend that you only talk to because that also becomes a problem, right? You need to be spread out. You need to have, a, going back to the, the other topic that we talked about last time, which was diversity. You need to be diverse in different aspects of your life and you need to be well balanced because again that's usually where people mess up they don't have a good balance and then everything they put everything on one basket so to speak so one person one relationship and when that goes up in flames then their whole life starts just spiraling out of control absolutely so that's what i would say yeah definitely agree with that but yeah without further to do Let's wrap this up. We will see you next. Peace out. <laughs> see you when I see you. Peace out. What the f is we doing?